Marvin Hamlish, What He Did for Love. This is the New York City premiere of the film. We are so proud to have it. Please welcome the director, Dory Berenstein. Now here it is, Marvin Hamlish, What He Did for Love. All right, I have a, a lot of people, a chorus, if you will, to bring up on stage, uh, starting with director Dory Berenstein. Uh, along with composer Rupert Holmes, lyricist Craig Cornelia, singer Valerie Lemon, and the president of the Pasadena Symphony Orchestra, Melinda Shea. It seemed to cover, I, I thought it might be impossible to, to sort of get the breadth of Marvin's personality into, even given an hour and 15 minutes or whatever it would be, to, he was such a rich man and uh, you never knew where you were going to quite find him from moment to moment. Um, and I think he would have been, I, I think he'd be very, very pleased with the work. Uh, I think he'd say, great, now what do we do for act two? <laughs> um, I, I, and I think he'd say, the one thing though, babe, you, you just left out this one line. That wasn't the, that, that was a good line, but the line I said after that, I, I, if you could, is it possible to put that back in? Is it? So he'd, he'd have, uh, but his notes would all be with great enthusiasm, I think with pride. I think you captured a lot of, um, a lot of stuff that people didn't know about Marvin, I think, in terms of just his yearnings. And uh, whenever you see someone who's funny and able to make you laugh all the time, you just have to be very careful not to think that that means that every second they are that happy. Sometimes their happiness comes from making you laugh and that makes them happy and then they're fine. And I think that that came through too. I don't think Marvin's in any way a tragic figure, but I think you caught some of his frustration and some of the goals he set for himself. And, and, and it was quite a challenging life. He's an amazing man, amazing man, who started affecting me from the early 70s. I got to meet him a little earlier than you. And we, we often got booked on TV shows together, and, which was the stupidest booking in the world. I'd say, okay, so two bespectacled musicians, you know, uh, who were both, you know. But, um, uh, and I remember every time I ever was on a TV show with Marvin, I would go to his dressing room and open it, and he would be on the phone with his mother, always. The first thing he'd get, he'd, he'd, I just landed, I just, I just got in, yeah, and well, here's, here's what I'm doing, babe. And I especially like um, uh, your emphasis on, on Marvin's delight in, in food. Everything is the best. Is this, if you want a, a knish, you want to have this, no, don't go there, this man. And uh, in, 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 while I still have the time, I put in the line, taste every flavor. That, that, that was for Marvin. Uh, anyway, a beautiful film for about um, one of the most beautiful people that I've ever known in my life. What are the memories that this film prompts from you? Well, I, I have to agree with everything that you both said, but I, I was really happy to see that you put the emphasis on that part of Marvin that a lot of people maybe who didn't know him personally may not realize, and that is his kindness and his generosity. I mean, um, he basically saved the Pasadena Symphony. Um, and it was all out of just generosity of his time, his creativity, and his love for, as was mentioned, the American Songbook and making sure that that music was out there, that children were exposed to that, and that it stayed alive. And it wasn't just you know about his music, it was about music, great, great music, and making sure that that was out there and alive for generations to come. And I know he changed my life forever, knowing him, and I think you captured so many of the wonderful things about him in this film. I think it was a wonderful job. The movie is what Marvin did for love, so I felt that we were able to address, <clears throat> excuse me, the essence of that song, and I agree with you, it's unbelievably powerful in the title of the film. Uh, the short answer to your question is 81 minutes and 27 seconds, and that is the, <laughs> and Penny, Falk will appreciate this, the exact frame rate in Ken uh, that we had to <clears throat> cut this film to for American Masters. Not even 82 minutes. So you can imagine this extraordinary human being 
and this amazing life, how much is not in the movie, you know? And I and that's such a beautiful song, and and we have on the on the DVD extras <laughs> coming coming to a DVD near you. Um, <laughs> Uh, a, a beautiful section uh, because I asked just about everybody I talked to what was their favorite Marvin song and so many people said what I did for love and there's a beautiful section where they talk about why and what that song meant to them and and what it represented uh, you know for Marvin uh, to have written that and and uh, that it spoke to who he was. And so, because there's so much that's not in the movie and the list is so long you can't believe, I, and that is such an important moment, I felt we're at least representing it with the title because it does capture it. Question is, how long did this film take? Um, <laughs> <laughs> we finished this past week. Uh, and uh, Marvin uh, passed away uh, August 6th, uh, a year ago uh, this summer, and um, and I talked to Terry about it uh, beginning of September, and I think our first shoot we shot uh, at Marvin's memorial, um, and so some of the footage that you see in the film was from the most oh, the mo incredible memorial at Juilliard, uh, Barbara Streisand singing, um, Carter Bray playing Sophie's Choice. That is from the memorial. And so that kicked off um, making this film. Who's got a question? Yes, right here on the aisle. It's more of a comment, if I may. I uh, am a therapist, and one of the markers of healing is when you see a smile come across your face, someone's face. My smile muscles are so tired right now <laughs> from being touched and moved by the humanness that he conveyed and you caught and captured. Thank you. So, uh, Dory, uh, I'll conclude by asking you, uh, what does happen next uh, with this film? It's uh, for PBS American Masters. Where can people tell uh, others how to see it? Uh, well. Uh, we're very fortunate we're going to have a, a week run at the Film Society at Lincoln Center in December. Uh, I'm very excited about that. And then we'll be on American Masters on December 27th. Tune in. And I just want to take a moment uh, to thank the four of you. Uh, I know firsthand how much Marvin loved all of you. Um, and having you know worked with Marvin and hearing all about Hamlish and Holmes and uh, all the work that you did together and incredible stories and the work with the Pasadena Symphony Orchestra. It's, it's wonderful to have the four of you here. So thank you. Well, thank you very much for joining us this evening. And thanks especially to Dory and the rest of those people on stage.